What is going on everyone? Sam here with The Candid Clarinetist. I know it has been a minute since I have recorded a podcast episode. However, I've been very busy on my YouTube channel. If you haven't yet had a chance to go visit the YouTube channel, you can find it at youtube.com slash The Candid Clarinetist. Another great way to get there would be through our Instagram link in our bio. Also, you can just visit our website, candidclarinetistpodcast.com, and you should find a link from there. So, the newest video that I posted, I did a video about my warm-up routine, so if you watch that, hopefully it'll give you some new ideas on what you could possibly do for your warm-up and things that you can add and things that I do to help me keep in shape. So I just wanted to do this episode today and kind of go over some current events in the clarinet world. It's been kind of fun seeing everything sort of come back to life after the COVID winter, as I like to call it. But it's been nice to have some things to look forward to in terms of auditions and the clarinet fest and everything. So I just wanted to give a brief wrap up of everything that's been happening recently. So as far as our audition winners, I just wanted to give a congratulations to these people. Uh, Andrew Sandwick was named the Boston Symphony Orchestra's new bass clarinetist. And I just got to give a big shout out to Andrew, too, because the layover between his audition and when he did his trial was over a year, which is super hard. You got to just think about it all the time. So congratulations to Andrew. He sounds great as always. And he's going to be going and he's going to be the Boston Symphony's brand new bass clarinetist. So huge win for Andrew. Congrats to him. Andrew, of course, plays in the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. He's the bass clarinetist there right now, but he's going to be starting with Boston at some point, I would imagine. And then Angelo Quayle was named the president's own Marine Band new clarinetist. Now, they usually do have more than one position for this, so I'm not sure if there were any other winners. If there were, I apologize. Angelo is the one that I know about, so congrats to Angelo. I think this audition was either late November or early December, so congrats to uh, Angelo. And then Eric Abramowitz, uh, he was named the principal clarinetist of the Toronto Symphony Orchestra following the retirement of Joaquin Valdepeñas. Joaquin retired from the orchestra. It's my understanding he's still going to be teaching and playing some chamber music and stuff like that, but he's stepping aside from his position with the orchestra. So Eric uh, was named the winner of that audition. And Eric was previously the associate principal clarinet in Toronto, and that's awesome for him that he gets to move over and play some principal clarinet with that orchestra, and they are in absolutely great hands with Eric playing that chair. So then the upcoming auditions that are going to be happening in the new year, these are some pretty big ones. So Boston Symphony next week actually is going to be having a second clarinet audition. So they just hired Andrew for bass clarinet, and they have a second clarinet audition following Michael Wynn's move to the Eastman School of Music. So January 3rd and 4th, the Boston Symphony is going to be welcoming hundreds of clarinetists to audition for the second clarinet spot. And then the following week, Nashville Symphony is going to be having a principal clarinet audition, and that's going to be January 10th through 12th in Nashville. And then the San Francisco Symphony associate principal in E-flat clarinet position is going to be auditioned February 7th and 8th, with the finals being on March 7th. So San Francisco is definitely going through some transition in their clarinet section. Both their second clarinetist and their associate principal and E-flat clarinetist retired, so There's probably going to be a second clarinet audition for San Francisco coming about sometime in the future. Uh, Another audition that I saw was the Army Field Band will be having an audition on April 5th. Now with the Army Field Band, they do a, what's called a a pre-screen. So what they do is they do sort of a preliminary round, but it's recorded. So you have to apply and they screen your recordings, and then they invite somewhere between five and ten people to the live audition, which is going to take place on April 5th. So good luck to all those who are taking those auditions. I hope that uh, you've had plenty of time to prepare and that you're feeling good, and I look forward to seeing who comes out on top. It's going to be an exciting time, I think. I think there's going to be a lot of auditions coming up, and people should be excited. I think that that orchestras are eager to fill these vacant chairs that they've been unable to fill in the last year or so, and I think that it is a very exciting time to be a clarinetist if you're looking to get a job in an orchestra. And the only other thing that I wanted to mention was that summer music festivals often have their auditions in January and February, and so 
make sure that you have gotten all your audition materials together and you're preparing right now for those summer music festival auditions. Uh, those things are all sort of coming back. So those are, I always tre treasured my time uh, when I went to Tanglewood and NRO and Spoleto and those places. It's just a terrific way to do some learning and be around lots of like-minded people. So make sure you're You've got all your ducks in a row in terms of the applications and you're scheduling your auditions and uh, make sure you have all your excerpts and everything together so that you can play your best when the time comes. Now, the only other thing that I wanted to mention today was that Clarinet Fest 2022 is taking place in Reno, Nevada at the Paper Mill Resort. And that's going to be June 29th to July 3rd. I'm really hoping to go myself, but it kind of depends on if I can get out of work or not. I would really love to go and film some vlogs and some content and just kind of see what is new with everybody at Clarinet Fest. Uh, people were notified recently about their participation in the event, so congratulations to all who are presenting and performing. I hope to be there to see you and hear you and hopefully do some interviews and reviews of new products, but I haven't yet confirmed that, so definitely something that I need to be working on very soon here. And then I guess I should mention, too, that uh, Buffet Crampon released a new clarinet called the BC-21 or BC-XXI, if you use the Roman numerals that they do. And it looks like a really interesting instrument. I haven't yet, unfortunately, gotten the chance to play one, but I'm really looking forward to being able to get my hands on that instrument and trying it out. It's got, I guess, the, the, the biggest new feature with it is that it has a right-hand low E-flat so it's not necessarily for, it's not necessarily to play in a low E flat. It's mainly used for an alternate to the throat B flat, which as we all know is the most notoriously bad note on the instrument. So I'm looking forward to trying the BC-21 at some point, but it looks like a fascinating new instrument and Buffet has absolutely done it again. So I look forward at some point to playing that, and I will be sure to report on it when I have the chance to do so. So I think that's going to wrap it up for today. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode. Nice, short, and sweet, but I wanted to update everyone on the current events going on in the world. If you guys have anything that you want me to sort of present on the podcast or make mention of, please be sure to email me, uh, thecanonclarinetist at gmail.com, or you can send me a message on Instagram or a message on Facebook, whatever works and I'd be happy to highlight it for you. I'm hoping to do more episodes in the new year and get back to sort of a regular podcasting schedule, but it kind of just all depends. I've got a really busy year with the orchestra, starting with the Daphnis and Chloe full ballet in January, so I've been busy practicing that. And uh, yeah, so more YouTube videos, more podcast episodes, more Instagram content. It's something that I'm looking forward to in the new year. And I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Once again, if you are not following us yet, be sure to follow us on Instagram at The Candid Clarinetist. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash The Candid Clarinetist. And you can find links to all of these various things on our website, candidclarinetistpodcast.com. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.